Hey there, in this video, we'll be seeing how you can write the Docker file for your Next.js application such that they can be containerized and then deployed. We'll be starting with a very basic Docker file which will have the bare minimum instructions needed to containerize a Next.js application. And from there, step by step, we'll improve our Docker file and convert it into a multi-stage Docker build such that it's more production optimized and is much lower in size. So let's get straight into it. So here we are on a Next.js application on VS Code and we'll be seeing what our application looks like as of now. And for that, I'll be starting a production-like environment by using next build command to first build all of the pages and APIs that are there in the application as of now. And then using next start to start a production-like environment. And these two steps are present inside the package.json under build and start scripts respectively. And these are the primary instructions that will be there in our Docker file. So let's just check if they behave as expected. So in the terminal, I'll first say npm run build. So if you see in the logs here, it's running the next build command and it just created a new dot next folder for us in our project. And in the logs, you can see all the pages that it just generated. We'll start our production like server by running npm start. So our application is up on port 3000. Let's just go ahead and check on the browser if these pages can be accessed. So here in the address bar, I'll say users one and we're taken to the user details page so this is what our application looks like as of now and we should be able to access the same pages once we are done containerizing it so let's now go ahead and create our docker file so here in our project directory i'll create a new file called docker file now this tutorial obviously assumes that you know a little bit about docker and you have docker installed on your system the docker file that we are creating here is just a text document which contains all the instructions that a user has to call on the command line to assemble an image. And when we are creating the image of our Next.js application, we just establish that the main commands that we have to run are npm install, npm run build, and npm start. So these are the main instructions that we will be defining in the Docker file, along with some more boilerplate. Now, before we start writing the instructions in the Docker file, let's also create a docker ignore file, which is a dot file, which contains all the folders and file names that you don't want to be copied in your docker image so we'll name it dot docker ignore it's something very similar to your git ignore file and here we'll keep it very simple and just add our dot next and node modules folder so that they are never copied i'll also add a comment here saying that these are the files that are ignored while copying to the image file system now since this is done let's start writing a docker file with where we'll first define the base image that we're going to use. And I'll be using the Node 16 version Alpine. Now in every Docker file, you define a base image, which is like a starting point for your application. Now what this statement will do is to pull the Node Alpine image that's present on the Docker Hub, which will have Node.js and the other necessary tools pre-installed so that we can run npm install and npm build commands. And once we have our base image, We'll be creating a new folder in its file system called user app by using the run instruction and run allows me to execute any shell commands that I want. So here the shell command is make directory and I'm giving the directory name as user app. If I run the list command on the current file system of the node Alpine image, these are all the directories already present there. So what we are really doing here is on that file system, running the command make directory user app so that there is a new directory called user available on the file system and this directory will be used to store our current source code so as a next step i want this directory to be my working directory where the application source code will be copied and all the other changes will be happening and for that i'll be using the command workter which allows me to define the current working directory and then i'll give the directory name as user app which we just created in the previous step. Now, naturally, the next step is to then copy all of our source code that you see here in our project. So we want to copy pages, public source, and all the other files that are present. And this is where your Docker ignore file will come into action, where it will not allow the dot next and node modules file from being copied. So here I'll just say copy dot and another dot. And these dots represent the path from where I want to copy and to which path I want to copy. 
so i'm basically saying i want to copy everything from the current next pages into our docker images working directory which is user app and now since everything is copied we just need to run npm install so that all of our dependencies that are there in the current package.json file are installed so in the next step i'll just give the run instruction so i can run shell commands and i'll say npm install now this step will install all our dependencies and once they are installed i want to run npm build so i'll say run npm run build and what this command will do is in the file system of the image create this dot next folder so we have a production application ready and once our build command is done all we want to do is expose a port where the application will be accessible and for that we'll be using the expose command it allows us to define the port that this container should listen to so we're using the port 3000 as of now and as our last step we will have to define the entry point for any containers that will be created using this particular image definition and for that we'll be using cmd directive which as you can see here sets the default parameters for this executing container which acts as the entry point instruction and our entry point instruction will just be npm start which finally will start our application so here we'll say npm within double quotes and then start so we are done with the bare bones implementation of a docker file where we have all the necessary commands that are needed to run our application and as we discussed in the beginning of this video it's really simple all we had to do was run npm install and then get our builds file ready by using npm run build and then just starting our production server by using npm start so in the terminal let's now try to build this particular docker image and for that we'll be using the command docker build and you can give a name to your image by using the t flag or the tag flag so i'll just call this particular image next js basic and the one parameter that the docker build command needs is the path where your docker file is present in the terminal i'm already inside the directory i'll just mention the path as the current directory so this is the command that i'll be running i'll hit enter you'll notice that in the logs it will go over each of the steps so it started from pulling in the node 16 alpine image and after it's done pulling in the base image it will move on to the next step 2 of 6 or the second command which was creating the directory then setting the current directory and then in the end creating the build files now the last command that we had put there to start our container this will only be executed when we start a running container using docker now since our image is done building we can view it using docker images command so i'll run this and as you can see here our next js basic image was created and it's about 373 mb in size now since our image has been successfully created the next step is to test it by running it on a container and for that we'll run the command docker run and here we'll be define the port that will be exposed on my system and to which port of the container will that be connected to so here i just defined that the port 3000 of the container should be accessible on the port 3000 of my local system and then i need to define the image name which is next js basic let's hit enter and as you can see in the logs the server has started and it's up on 3000 and since we defined the port forwarding the containers 3000 port will be also accessible on my systems 3000 port so let's go ahead and check this our application is up let's also try to access one of the users routes so the container that we created from our basic image definition is working what we want to do next is to improve on our docker file definition and make it production ready we'll be covering that topic in a separate video because this one is already getting too long i'll be posting that video on the coming monday itself so stay tuned for that one and please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more content around docker or if you have any doubts that was it for the video and i'll see you guys in the next one